matron take them away. Okay guys, burning a bit of the midnight oil because I want to help the squad out. And what does that mean? It means I'm an idiot. So I'm going to have me coffee because we all know Scruffy likes his coffee. And I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm looking at something that I'm really not all fair with, um, which is Bitcoin. And why? Bitcoin's been introduced into the 5% as prop fund. So I pulled up a small account and I'm going to have a look at it. Now I'm going to scale this right the way down to the lowest denominator, 10 cents a point, because I really don't like Bitcoin and I don't want to get my ass chewed out. But if I can sort of show the process, which going forward next year is probably what I'm going to do. Like I'll just stick a pound a point on so you can see the pip count rather than sort of getting dazzled by big numbers all the time. It's very nice to show you sort of my wages and sort of doing two or 300 quid a day. But I think you should be seeing the process. I don't like the industry and the way that it's sold. Oh, look at this. He's a wonderful £32,000. Well, it's brilliant if you've got 200 lots on. But actually, it's only 16 pips. And that raises the question. How many pips do you want in a day? There's nothing wrong with having a 10-pip target. And I'm kind of sick to death of the emails I get going, ah, yeah, your targets are too small, you should be doing five to one and, and your risk reward should be this. Well, the question is, do you make a living from this? Because I do, and I prove it every day, and my accountant certainly proves it. So it doesn't matter whether you have a small target, a big risk reward, if you choose to go that route. I trade my way, and it works for me. And that's all that matters because I don't believe in risk reward. I think it's the biggest fable out there. It's the best sales pitch in the world. You shit at your job, but I'm gonna pay you anyway. Your hit rate should be greater than 55% at least. Why? Because you should get it right more than you get it wrong. And if you're getting it wrong more than 50% of the time, you ain't doing this job, you're gambling. And then that's where the sales peddlers go, ah, oh, your risk reward should be this. In business, you work on ROI, return on investment. As long as the money you're putting into market is working for you and you're getting more out than you put in, that's a good return, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in um, a chart. I've already analyzed this for the chaps in the group. Um, we're going to be putting some orders in. Uh, I'll just pull this down, uh, there you go. So I've already done the analysis. And if we look at sort of the requests, um, I'm not rightly sure where, where, where he asks me, but it's it's in amongst this lot somewhere. Um, oh, there we go. Can I look at it? See what your thoughts are. Um, sure, I will. And that's what I like to do for the guys. I break down the markets for them. I tell them what my opinion is. I tell them where I'm gonna trade it. And then we put it to practice. So what are we looking at with this little bad boy here? Well, it's a standard um, MT5 account, you know, uh, hedge account. And it's all marked up ready. Now, if I look at this from an anchor's point of view, what I can see is the market is starting to push down. It's starting to push down into these key levels that I've put in. What these blue lines are, they are entry exits, the predetermined entry exit points. So if I can get in here, I'll trade it into here. If I get in there and trade it back, they help me. If you mark a chart up correctly like this, you're halfway there. And there is a technique to it, and you'll find that in the Discord. But it works because it's methodical. Okay? Roadmap, if you like. Then you need your sat map. What direction are you going in? You know, are you following RSI's going up? Are you following stochastics? Now I look at a number of things and then I place them together and I do them in baskets of three. So I look at three time frames, and I look at three elements inside of that time frame. you know, almost like ABC patterns. 
But the problem is, it's like an Elliott wave. It's not an Elliott wave till it's an Elliott wave. So then I've got to look at another three time frames to see if they correspond. And then another three to see if they correspond. So I'm working my way through and each one of them has three anchor points. And what it does is it gives me the best averages going. Now, because I've got the best averages, I've got the, the wind in my sails, if you like. I've got um, my ducks in a row. So, what are we looking at here? Well, if I'm to size down, that's 10 cents. And if I get a dollar or two dollars out of it, I'm more than happy. So, I've just done the equation, and it's not good. All right? So, if I pull this down, the general bias is all over the place. But I do know the higher bias is to the upper side. But the middle bias, what I work on, in and around the anchor, plus one, minus one, is here why I am. But the low time frames, the scalping time frames, which are essentially your triggers, are also saying it's up. So it's telling me I shouldn't really be trading it. But I promised that I would, so here we are. So what I have to do is put, apply a little bit of common sense. So what I would do with that point is I'll take it down into five minutes and I'll have a look to see what the situation is. Okay. Now, from five minutes, I can see there's a strong drive there coming off this. So was that a bounce point? Well, it never quite got there. Okay. So if I'm doing 50p a point, I can go all the way down into this section, okay? But I need some reason to get into this market. So I'm gonna step it back, and I'm gonna have a look to see what the bigger picture is going. Well, the drive that was behind that move is here. It's this one, okay? So what I would do is, I want to sort of build into where the price is. So I'll look at a fib here. What's this telling me? Well, it's telling me that it's been to 50, it's breached, it's pushing down, and it's now at a key level, and it's working its way possibly to this point here. Okay. So if I was to tighten that in to the last surge, which is here, there is something that I always look at. It's the 50%. So the 50% is now near this level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop another level here. These ones. I'm gonna change the color slightly just so that I can recognize it. Okay. At least I will do when it gets done. Right, so there, 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 down onto here, and then by magic, my extensions line up to where I said I would stage to. So now I can buy any, any one of these levels, any one of them. So that's what I'm gonna do. So looking at this, I'm gonna drop it to five minutes, see what's going on, and pull an order in, now, the order system on this is very easy. If you leave it on market execution, you can just go buy or sell and you get what you're given. Or you can go pending order. Now, I want the price to come down, bounce, and move up. Okay. So, what I want to be doing is it's going to be a buy limit. So, I want it to come down, buy it, and then off to the races. So, down over. Just pull it down. I'll just drop a basic thing here just so I can get a, a profit line in because I want to be um, able to move it. 2,000. Right, there we go. And then I'll just take that up. To, no, no, I think I'll even take it up to there, to be honest. Under there. Oh, that's a bugger it looks like it's um, off to the races without me right so I'm going to leave that there so what I can do as well is sandwich this thing now there's a crossing point coming in 
which is giving me a trigger. One, two, three, four, five. So I can put another order here at the top of this. And then I can see which one triggers first. Now this one, if I change that, will be what's called a buy stop order. In other words, the price comes up, picks the order and keeps on going. The limit, it goes the opposite direction to get the order and up. Okay, follow that. So this one, we just need to move the price up. Keep on going. It's got loads and loads and loads of points. Just like so. 2,000 points on there. And then I can just drag it into place. Just like so. And then what I'm going to do, whichever one triggers first, I'll delete the other one. This is saddling the trade. All right. What it means is it's pretty much ready to rock and roll, but I'm not sure which one is going to trigger. So I'll just take the lesser of two evils. In other words, whichever one goes first. Because you saw it shoot up and then it's come down and then it's gone up. Best of both worlds. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to stage it through these levels that I've just put in. And if it goes beyond that, I'm looking at kind of damage control. I may have to buy my way out of trouble, kill the trade, whatever. So let me play it out. And I'll come back to you, hopefully, before the end of the night. If not, I might have to hold it into the small hours. Because one of the beauties of um, trading Bitcoin is it just runs constantly. It's always on the move. Right, that one's in. So we're going to kill off this trade. Okay. Because we don't need this one no more. So we're just going to delete that order. All right. So get rid of that order. And you might see me put extra orders running down here. And then I look to get a couple of quid out of it. Simple as that. All right. Catch you in a bit. Okay, Steph, so that was for you, my little milk tray friend. And if you pull that up, uh, there you go, two quid. So that's like 20 pips, if you want to look at it that way. Um, it's a little account, did it on purpose just to show you what the process is, rather than on the money side of it. But as you can see, it respected exactly where I drew them in. It didn't come onto my sort of extra trade and off to the race as it went so what's the moral of the story here well it's quite possibly a chart is a chart now as i said at the start of this i'm not a big fan of cryptocurrencies um i find it a bit like the wild west i certainly don't like all of these new oh this is the new talk and this is the new coin because to me they're just penny stocks and you've got no idea whether they're going to go up, down, sideways, nothing. They are purely a punt. Now, if you get them cheap and you just buy it to hold, I'll go with that. But if you're going to trade it, it's a different kettle of fish. You need something with a, a bit of gusto in it, a bit of momentum behind it. And Bitcoin, Ethereum, as that's been put into the 5%ers, can give you that. Because they've been around for a while now which means there's a half decent amount of data in them. And if there's a mass amount of data in them, you can start to read the chart. And that's exactly what I've done here. Did it for the guys, told them exactly what I was after. And I wanted maybe 15, 20 pips out of it. Well, they're about 10p a pip, two quid, did my job. I'm more than happy. And it's late at night. So it's nine o'clock now. So it's kind of showing you, you can trade 
this time of night after work with an asset that's moving. Now we can drop this into other assets because there are other assets that move. Um, like the US 100 for argument's sake is pretty good from seven o'clock through to nine. So you can trade after work if you so wish. So there you go, very quick one off the cuff. Um, what I do in the squad is, if I ever say anything, I do back it up. And I'll tell them what I'm doing before I go to market. So I am constantly held to account, if you want to call it that way. And I'd be very grateful if the guys in the squad drop some comments below this and kind of put a little bit of testament to that. And then it maybe shuts a few people up that constantly pull it apart going, it's only 10 pips. It's 10 pips more than I have. Do it every day, little steps, and suddenly you'll find those little steps don't half add up at the end of the week. Just a thought. And talking of thoughts, do hit your comments. I answer every single one personally as I do any message that comes to me. So as always, guys, trade well, keep your risk managed, but above all, do what you love, and the money will follow. See you all in the next one. Thank you.